This is part five of the series making this low poly well. In this video, we'll be adding materials and rendering. Check the playlist in the description for previous videos. Okay, so here's where we got up to last time and I want to start texturing my object. So I'll go across to the shading workspace in the middle at the top here. That takes us to this layout where we've got a folder window on this side and we can drag in any textures we want. And we've got the image editor there as well, but we're not actually using image textures, so we don't really need these two. So I'm going to rearrange the workspace slightly just so you can see it easier. You don't have to follow this bit. So what I'll do is I'll click and drag to get rid of this one, change this to the shader editor and click and drag to get rid of the shader editor on this side. And I'll open this up a bit. I'll press N to get rid of this side panel here and let's zoom in on our object. Now in the shading workspace, we've got this sphere down here and it puts us, if I press middle mouse button to go across the menus here in material preview mode. So in order to see your textures, you need to be in material preview mode or rendered view. Rendered view is actually exactly what you'll see in the camera. Material preview mode gives you an HDRI, which is this circular thing in the background to light our scene. And it gives a nice even light so you can kind of see what the textures are really gonna look like in a more natural setting. So let's start with something fairly straightforward. I'll go for this piece of wood just here. So I'll create a new material in the shader editor. And that creates a principal BSDF going into a material output with a white color, which you can see there. I'll change the name of this to wood one in case I want several colors of wood that is, and give this a woody color. So I'll come across to the brownie area here. It's more the orangey area, but as soon as you start reducing the value or the lightness, then it starts looking like wood. And that's not looking too bad. It's a bit shiny. I always tend to go across to full roughness when I'm doing low poly work. I think it gives it a nice look, but occasionally I'll give it a little bit of shininess. But in this case, Let's go full roughness, because that's what I'm used to. Possibly a little bit dark, so let's bring the brightness up a little bit. Might be a bit saturated as well. This circle is the saturation level, and you can see what happens when I bring that back towards the middle. Makes it slightly less saturated, but I think somewhere around there looks okay. We can change it again and update it later on as we see fit. Now, it's a good idea if all the wood shares the same color. Occasionally you want a different wood for some reason, but in this case, I think it'd be fine if they all share the same color. So I can select every piece of wood, that's this one down here as well. And if I select this one last that has the texture on it, so when I select that, you can see the texture appear there. That's now the active object. I can press Control L, Link Materials. And remember that's in the object menu under Link Transfer Data, Link Materials. Okay, so now the wood's in, you can kind of see what that looks like. And that seems an okay color at the moment. But like I say, we can change that if we need to. Okay, slightly different though is the well. So if I select that and let's say give this a color stone one. So I want each stone to have very slightly different gray colors. I think that works nicely. But if I start changing this to a grayish color somewhere around about here and a little bit more roughness, it all looks a bit bland. It's also changed these objects as well because I started with the default cube, which had a base material on it and I've just changed the name of it. So they all share the same material. What we need though is to be able to paint each stone individually but it's all one object, so how do we do that? Well, we use what are called texture slots just here. So if I add a couple of texture slots, so one and two just over here. Oh, there was a little glitch there, but you can add texture slots on the side here. And at the moment, we've only got one material in each of our slots. If I go to the second slot down and add a new material, and I'll call this stone two. And for now, I'll just give it a gray color, a dark gray color, so you can see the results. We're not seeing any of that change on here, but if I go into edit mode, you can see all my stones laid out like this. You can change that if you want to go into the modifier, you can change the bend modifier with this on cage option as it's called, and you can see the results in edit mode. But in some ways it's helpful not to see the results because I can select them more easily like this. So if I press Alt A to deselect all, and what we're doing is trying to select faces. So I'll go to face mode, not that it matters too much in this case. And I'll select a few of these. So Alt A to deselect all, and then L, you can select the different separate parts of a single object like so. And you don't have to hold down shift, you're always adding to your selection. So these four stones here, for example, I can go up to the slots and then say assign. And you'll see what happens. It's assign that different color to my well. I'll bring up the roughness and I'll just change the color very slightly. So bring up, so it's similar to the other uh, gray, and I'll just give this a slightly greeny color, very subtle. You can change the saturation here. That's how colorful it is basically. And I want it just very subtly green like so. 
maybe a little bit more roughness as well. Okay, so we'll do the same for slot three. So again, select slot three and create a new material for it. I'll call it stone three, obviously. And again, I'll give it a mid gray and go slightly to the blues like this. Let's select some different stones this time. So Alt A to deselect all and select some different ones. In fact, I'm not sure which ones I had selected. So that's a point where you might want to go to the on cage so you can see which ones have already had different colors changed and so forth. But those should be fine. Up to the slots and assign. And let's come out of edit mode so we can see that. And we've got some different colored stones just there. So we need to go into each of our other stones and then select this one last and control L to link the materials. That way, when I select one of these, I'll have my three slots available. However, I do need to go in and say which faces I want to be part of which slot. So just quickly, I'll do this one. So Alt A to deselect all, select a few, and then assign this to slot two. And then maybe select some different ones, Alt A. And again, I'll turn the on cage so I can see what I've had selected. And assign these to slot three. And let's see what that looks like. I think the purple one's probably a little bit too dark. So just make sure you are on the slots for that material. So slot three, and then I can just make that a little bit brighter like so. And then I'll just speed the footage up of doing the other two. So again, into edit mode and selecting different faces and assigning them to different slots. And the same for the one beneath it. Okay, so we've got different colors on different stones on the well. So pause the video here and catch up with me creating those. Okay, so the roof tiles slightly different because we never join them together. So we can do those separately and I can just create one for this, for example, and I'll call this tile one. And I gave it a slightly ready color, ready orange, I suppose, somewhere a little bit more saturated, maybe around there, I would say. And again, roughness all the way up, maybe a tiny bit more shininess on this, but only a little bit. So that's good for one. I'll do another one and then obviously copy them to different ones as I go. So again, create a new material, call it tile two. We don't need different slots. I can just go in. I could use the picker even to pick this color and then just adapt it very slightly. So maybe make it slightly darker, just bring it across the reds a bit more. And then another one, new material, tile three. I think I only made three last time I did this. Use the picker and we can adapt these as we go. I'll select some random ones now. What I can do is hide some of the other objects. So we don't need the base. And we don't need the frame, makes it a little bit easier. Let's just minimize these collections as well so I can see what's going on a bit easier. And really I should be putting these stones into a collection as well. That'll just make it a touch easier. I'll call these rocks just so it's a different name and hide those as well. I ought to put these into a collection as well. I'll call this winch and hide those. So it's a bit easier to select things now and I can select some random ones to link the material to and select the one you want to copy from last, control L, link materials. So I'll speed this process up a little bit and I can now bring back my other objects. I can just click and drag across them. I do need to hide the spares though and see what that looks like. Oh, I missed one. And I think I need to change the colors a bit more, make them a little bit more saturated possibly. I'll just speed up this process of tinkering slightly with the colors. It should be a subtle change of color rather than anything really obvious. So they shouldn't be too far away from each other. Okay, lastly then I'll do the rope. Let's create a new texture for that one. A fairly yellowy color, fairly bright, roughness up. And I can copy the texture from one to the other. And then some rocks. I can actually just choose a stone material for each of these by choosing a stone and going to the drop down menu and selecting a material. And then just copy them across the different ones using the command control L link material. We'll change the color of the floor as well. So I'll select that and give it a new material. And I'll call that floor and just give it a medium gray color, maybe a little bit of lightness somewhere around there, just so it's not too bright and distracting. I'll scale it up nice and big. So we've got that there. So now's a good time to pause the video and catch up with me finishing off those textures. And let's go across to 
rendered preview mode now, which is just here. So this is what it's looking like in rendered view. Quite a lot different because of that HDRI. So let's add in an HDRI for rendered view. I can go up to the top left of the shader editor under object and change that to world. I can then move these across slightly and add in shift A under texture, environment texture, not an image texture, an environment texture. Add that in and hook that up. Now to start off with, it will probably go pink because it's got no environment texture loaded. A really good place to find some HDRIs is Polyhaven. And you can click on the HDRIs here and download some HDRIs. Some are quite bright and vivid. Some are a little bit softer. And you can kind of see from the balls below what effect that's going to have. And just experiment with different ones. So if I go to open and go to my HDRI folder, where I've downloaded a few, I can start thinking about adding these in and seeing what it looks like. So one like this, it's quite vivid and bright, giving a lot of directional light from here. I'll just hide the light in the scene so that doesn't actually distract us. So I'll go into the collection and hide that in the viewport and render. So there's that one that's got a direct light like so. Let's try a different one that's a little bit softer, maybe, maybe one that hasn't got a really bright spot like these. This one here is very soft light compared to something like this. So I'll open that and you can see that's very soft and it's hardly even giving off any shadows, amazingly. Which brings me on to the next subject of the rendering settings. We'll come back to the HDRI in the moment and maybe tinker with that and play with it. But if I bring up the properties here and go to the render settings, currently we're in EV. It's a really fast render engine and you can see it's giving us a really quick update like this. We can increase the quality by changing the samples to something like 64. And you shouldn't see too much lagging in performance depending on the quality of your computer. So you might want to change those settings accordingly. One thing that will increase the quality greatly is turning on ray trace. You can see immediately that we've got lots of shadows in the crevices and things like that. That's what's called ambient occlusion. And if you had reflections in the scene, it would do a lot for you there too. Incidentally, if you want to see what it looks like without any of the distracting lines, you can turn off the overlays just here and get a better idea of how it looks. I am seeing a little bit of a drop in performance in the frame rate once turning ray tracing on, but it's hardly anything. Lastly, the background can be very distracting. So I'll come down to film just here and turn on transparent. So we only have the floor now, and I think that looks a lot better. Now, if you're wanting a little bit more of a realistic look and generally a better look, it's best to change the render engine to cycles. And you can see instantly it's giving us a much better render, which looks a bit more real, but it is a bit slower. If you have a GPU, then I would suggest changing it over. Change the GPU there. You might need to go to edit preferences and under system, you can choose your GPU here, especially if you've got an RTX, then do enable optics. That's a lot faster. Personally, I don't include my processor because I find I get faster results just using the GPU. So I'll close that down, make sure that's on GPU. And I can now turn on denoising, which you can see the feedback I'm getting is really fast now. And if I go onto the denoise and turn this to optics, I don't think that will make any difference because it's automatic. So it should pick up um, using optics anyway, but that's with the RTX card. It's just that little bit quicker. Otherwise use open image denoise, which is still very good. So this is looking great. Now it's just a matter of tinkering a little bit, maybe using the light in the scene and perhaps moving that around a bit. I'll turn overlays back on so I can see it. And you can change the type of light under the light settings here. I find area lights are really good because they're a little bit easier to position. You can click on this yellow dot here to point it at things. You can also, if I move the 3D cursor, shift right click, I can move the 3D cursor to position, change the transform pivot point to the 3D cursor, and then I can easily rotate my light around the 3D cursor, pressing R then Z. Change the color to maybe something a little bit more orangey, maybe the power to something like 500 watts, and already we're getting something that's looking pretty awesome. Lastly then, it's a case of positioning your camera. I find this easier in layout view. So if you go back to layout view, make sure your camera is visible, and then press zero on your numpad. If for some reason you've deleted your camera, you can press Shift A to add in a camera. And I'll press N to get rid of the side panel. If I press this lock option here, I can start moving the camera around like it's a viewport. And then I can move that into a nice position, somewhere around here maybe, or even the other side might look a little bit better. And then I can press F12 to render, or you go up to the render options there. And then we've got a nice looking render. If I zoom in a bit though, you can see that my planks are a little bit out of alignment. What you might need to do there, if I close this down, is actually go into the objects. In fact, I'll come out of camera view with zero. It's lining up on this side nicely, but not on this side. And you might need to apply the mirror modifier. So under here, apply, and then you can go into edit mode 
and start moving the edges around so I can move these two. G then, oh, I've still got snapping turned on, turn that off. G then X, and move those across just a little bit and then it lines up nicely. So if you need to apply any of the modifiers, you can. It's always best to just leave them as they are because it gives you more control. And there you have it, that's how you create this lovely well object here. If you need further tips on how to render the background or render out animations, then look at my quick tips guide playlist, link in the description. Make sure you tag me in any of your creations so I can see how you're getting on. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.